Hey guys, so tonight I think we're going to round out the uh, DMG IPS kit installs with what we got here, the V3 version, as you can tell by the uh, text on the PCB here. Uh, so I've got a perfectly working ga original Game Boy. Uh, I picked this one up very recently. Uh, apparently it didn't work, but I booted it up and, well, shocker, it works just fine. Uh, the only issues are, aside from this screen rot, it's missing the lens. Now, I did already sit here just now and scrape off some of the old glue because, I don't know, I just wanted to save a couple minutes when it comes time to get this thing buttoned up. And uh, it does need a little bit of cleanup, but I'll do that later. Not, this this video is already going to be long enough as is. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and get this torn down and let's get started. Uh, so actually, before I even do that, I want to go over what you get with the kit. Now, mine isn't in the retail packaging, um, mostly because of who I am as a person. Uh, now, I, I already opened this up and I was playing with it to get some measurements and test it out. Um, I didn't do any testing beyond just seeing that it powers up, and it does. Uh, I'll, I'll save the rest of the testing for this video here, but I wanted to get a few measurements because you might notice that this screen and this PCB look a little bit different than uh, the previous ones before it, aside from the fact that they're black. This PCB, as far as I can tell, is the exact same as the V2 version, except for the new color. So I've got here, a uh, V2 DMG in bits and you can see the PCB has these uh, has these four holes here basically for the uh, slot the tabs in the back of the LCD well this PCB has the exact same thing and you might notice this LCD doesn't even have those tabs so I'm guessing they just control C control V this PCB and it's the same as this one it looks the same to me. I don't see any differences aside from the color. Um, but, well, okay. It says V3 on it. But let's move on to the LCD and the converter board itself. Let me get this out of here. So you'll have to forgive me. My LCD is kind of attached to the converter board on this one. Uh, actually, no. I think it'll come off without too much hassle. Yeah, I already had to rip it off earlier, so the uh, glue is already pretty much ruined. But as you can see, let's put these two side by side here. This connects with the um, the IPS connector that is common on the like Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Color IPS kits, but it's not the same LCD. You can notice, um, I, I, I think a lot of it had to do with uh, complaints from me and some other people who noted that this connector was really difficult to to uh, uh, to, to seat properly. The uh, flat flex cable often goes in crooked and the uh, bail itself is just, I don't know, it, it takes an unreasonable amount of force and it feels like you're going to break it. And I don't know, maybe... Uh, maybe quite a few customers complained and, uh, you know, hey, I broke the bail. Can you just sell me this part or just a new LCD because I, you know, something like that. So they decided to change it up. Uh, now, I did do some measurements on these LCDs and the LCDs themselves, they're extremely, extremely close in size. This one is about a millimeter smaller in all dimensions. Uh, length, width, and the actual image itself for the Game Boy, uh, the Game Boy display. It, it it is a little bit smaller. I'll throw a link to my Thingiverse where I uploaded some uh, dummy models. If you want to see for yourself, you can 3D print them if you want, but it's not worth it. I don't think. But you you can still load them up on your computer and put them side by side. There's measurements. Uh, all the measurements are accurate, but I didn't I didn't bother putting in the features like the um, the ribbon connectors or anything like that. But anyway, I'm getting distracted. This is, as you can see, they're pretty close, but they are not the exact same thing. So we'll try and compare them uh, once I've got 
this one installed here. My understanding is that the difference between these two kits is pretty minimal, except that this one should be easier to install and somehow this PCB solves some button contact issues that some people have been having. Um, I, Like I said, I don't think there's anything different on it, so I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But anyway, I just wanted to go over, I take a few minutes to go over some of the difference here differences. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect that. This is not the same LCD as the um, as the other kits. Hang on, let me grab one just for comparison. Right, so this is the uh, the Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color IPS LCD. You can see they are, let me put them down flat so you can compare them. They're not the same thing. Uh, this one's quite a bit shorter, should be a little bit wider, and indeed it is. And the connector is not even close to the same spot. I think it is the same connector. No, it's not even the same connector. Yeah. I could have I could have figured that out if I just put them right next to each other. But yeah, not the same LCD. Now this one's probably out of a Blackberry too, because so far that's what all of the LCDs have been out of, except for the uh, V2. I still haven't figured out what this one's out of, but that's... That's besides the point. Anyway, let's get on with the install here. I've been yammering on long enough. So what you get with it, what you get with your purchase here, you get this button contact board, the actual conversion board, and the ribbon cable that connects these two, the big ribbon cable that connects the contact board to the DMG, and then the LCD itself. Oh, and you get some um, double-sided tape that I did have on my desk before I started filming. And I have no idea where it went, but it doesn't matter because I'm not gonna use it anyway. Okay, let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to go ahead and start by taking apart the DMG, which is right here. I'll pop out my flash cart. And looks like it's time to wrap my batteries, I think, or rewrap them. But I'll worry about that later. So depending on the model DMG, there's either six JIS screws or six tri-point screws. The older ones have JIS, so yours don't. If you're looking at yours, going, "Hey, mine has JIS." It, don't don't worry. It's not. It's probably not a knockoff or a bootleg or anything like that. It's just that's how the original models came. The newer ones. Uh, not, not specifically the Play It Loud versions, but those two. Uh, but the newer beige models did come with some try points. Okay, so I haven't actually taken this one apart before. I'm just giving it a quick once over to make sure there's no issues that I need to clean up. And it looks actually surprisingly clean. There's usually a ton of corrosion on these, but. I think we're good, so I'll set that aside. Oh, there was a broken screw post. Oh, there's quite a few broken screw posts. This one looks split. That was the broken one. Hmm. I think I might swap out this top, top then. I have terribly yellowed. Oh, that one's even worse. Okay, well, never mind. Uh, I'll have to glue that at some point then. All right, bear with me while I take these out. Okay. So eight million screws later. Um, I don't, I'm not too worried about the broken posts. I'll still do the install in this shell. Ultimately, I wanna put this in a clear Play It Loud model eventually, but I don't have one right now, so I can't do that. This should just pop out. On some models, this adhesive right here is missing, I think. 
or at least it's not stubborn at all. It was not stubborn in this one. On some models, it is extremely stubborn, but just keep pulling, it'll come out. Okay, so we don't need to do anything with this except remove this speaker here because the new version does not have a speaker. Uh, so while the soldering iron's heating up, I just wanna grab a quick baseline as far as um, what kind of power this thing, what kind of effect this is gonna have on the, uh, on the Game Boy. You know, see if it is any more or less efficient than the uh, previous versions. Let me cram this in here. I should have tested it with the uh, top still assembled, but that's okay. Set that to about 4.8. Set the minus, is that right? Yeah, that's, I think that's right. Set the positive. Hook it onto that. Move that over there so it doesn't short on anything. And if all goes well, should boot up. Oh, let's adjust that a little bit closer to 4.8 so we're at the same as the old one. Now this screen is not very usable for just about anything other than testing, but it should still give us good value here. And I'm pretty sure this is the same game I tested the other one with. So in the overworld at 4.76 volts, we're pulling about 56, 55 milliamps. That's pretty standard for these things. It's not fantastic, um, but with a good set of batteries, that's going to last you forever and a half. Okay. So now, let's go ahead and get started with the rest of the install. Oh, I hate these ribbons. Oh wow, I knocked it and it went all the way up to 10 volts. That's probably not good. All right, whatever, doesn't matter. Let's move on to this part. All right, so with the soldering iron heated up, removing this speaker is very trivial. Gotta do that. And then take this thing here. Feed the speaker through just like that. And find my solder. There it is. So for one of these contacts, it's actually super stubborn. I need to bump the heat up on my iron to have any chance at soldering it. So let me just give that a second to bump up. Okay, there we go. And I can actually explain the technical reason for that, but I assume most of you don't care. Um, Long story short, it's because there aren't any thermal reliefs on that solder joint. So if you take a look at, it's probably hard to tell because I just soldered it. Like you can see on how on the right one, it's just this pad here and then this line. Well, on the left one, the one that's hard to solder, which is the right one on the other side, um, there is no line, it's just connected to this whole big sheet of copper, which sinks all the heat and just makes it a little bit harder to solder. If you have a temp control iron, just set it higher. I used about 650 Fahrenheit, which is, uh, I don't know, because I already lowered, or lowered it. But for reference, I normally solder at about 540, which is 280 Celsius. Anyway, moving on. 
Now that we've got that prepared, we need to go ahead and prepare the shell. Now the prep is actually the same as the old version here. So we need to snip off that screw post, snip off that screw post, and then we need to trim off this support up here. Highly recommend a good set of flush cutters for this. I think that's just about the only tool you need to actually install this besides a soldering iron and a screwdriver. And that's it. Now we can take the LCD and I believe it goes like that. I can't remember if it goes all the way to the top or not, but I think that should be it. Uh, let me actually, oh, you know, there was a point to comparing the size of the new kit versus the old kit. I wanted to talk about the brackets that are used to install this. I'm not sure that the V1 and V2 brackets are, are going to work for the V3 kit. Um, and I completely forgot to grab one. So give me a moment, moment. I'm going to go grab the bracket that I printed to test this out and I still need to do some cleanup on it. So I'll be back in just a couple minutes. All right, that was mostly uneventful. I got the uh, bracket here and shoot, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting who posted this. I think, do I have it handy? No. Oh yes I do. Uh, this is from a user on Thingiverse, it goes by the handle Solo761. Um, he designed this bracket and posted it, and it doesn't normally have this hole in here. My printer decided that it uh, wasn't going to print that particular spot, and I had to cut it out. And when I just cut it out right now, it cracked. But that's fine. It'll still be perfectly usable for our purposes. Uh, but apparently this is a pretty decent bracket, and I've never tried it out because I've just always... Um, tape them in. Uh, but quite frankly, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think I like taping these LCDs in. I, uh, for context, I live in, I live in the desert. It was probably almost a hundred degrees, maybe a little bit more Fahrenheit. Um, I don't know what that is in Celsius. I think it's like 30 something or high, high twenties. I don't, forgive me, I'm, I don't, I'm familiar with Celsius as a measurement system, just not for temperature, uh, like weather temperature. Okay, so the idea of this bracket is your LCD sits in here and you can position it exactly, line it up with the edges and that'll hold it in place and uh, Bob Jaunty, there you go. Uh, but what we wanted to test here is how this works, the specific bracket works with the, uh, with the new LCD. And the whole purpose of me measuring the LCD earlier was because I wanted to see, you know, if it's going to work. And I think we're going to have some issues here. So let me, I'm going to leave the uh, plastic on this because, like I said, my I fully intend to install it in a different Game Boy. This is just what I have right now. Uh, but there is, on the plastic, there is a red line here and up here. I don't think we'll see that one up there, but just so we're on the same page. Okay. So I'm going to drop this in here. And oh, this LCD is wider. I thought it was... I didn't... I thought it was not wider. I thought it was uh, skinnier. It measures in at 50.86, probably 50.85. And this one, there we go. Yeah, 50.09. So yeah, this one is wider. It's not gonna work with this bracket. It does seem to fit nicely though, shame. Maybe I'll use this bracket on another install. I do have another bracket that I printed 
some point. Let me pause while I find that. Okay, here we go. There's another bracket that looks a little bit more like this. Um, as you can tell, my printer has been having issues for quite a while now, and I still haven't gotten it sorted, but it's better. Just anyway, uh, this goes in here like this. Again, print's a little messed up, but it'll be perfectly suitable for our purposes. And then this would go in here like this, but you still have to, uh, still have to like tape the LCD down. And so I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to use, what tape should I use? I should use double-sided tape that it comes with, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use, some Captain tape, because that'll hold nicely. And because I've got it handy. Because at this point, we're just testing the bracket, you know, see how well this bracket works with the new kit. And I'm going to have some issues with that LED hole, but I'll just cut around it. Again, not recommended installing this way, but for testing, I think it'll be fine. Okay. We'll go back and do it the right way in a few minutes. Okay, it's a little bit crooked, but that's my fault, not the bracket's fault. Just like that. So it goes just like that. We want to bring that up. So one difference with this new version here is that this ribbon does actually get folded twice. So it gets folded because it comes down and then you have to fold it up and then down again. And bear with me while I pop these screws in real quick. All right, so I have four extra screws. It looks like they took away a couple holes on me. Uh, there's the two screw posts I cut out and then I thought there were two more holes right there. Let me... Yeah, okay, so they did make a slight change. They got rid of those two holes right there. So I think I think that's what the uh, button contact issue is related to. And I did, I was thinking about this during my last couple videos, but I never actually said anything, and for that I apologize. But if you crank these screws down too tightly, it's gonna give you some issues. Uh, same thing like if you crank down, uh, I think it's, one of these two on, no, on this side, if you crank down one of these two on this side, it's gonna cause your lens to pop out. So before we actually go any further, I can see that my LCD isn't centered because there's quite a bit of bezel right here, and then there's no bezel right there. But I'll keep going because let's try it out. It doesn't really matter which way around you put this cable. I like to do contacts up just because that's the way it comes on the DMG. Okay. Let's 
Let's pop it in here. Okay. So those are still connected. Oh, nice. That's 4.8 again. I swear that wasn't on purpose. Okay. I mean, yeah, totally. Totally was on purpose. Just Yeah, <laughs> that bracket's not going to work at all. The screen needs to go a lot higher. And so, yeah, that's the red line I was talking about because I still have the protective film on it. But let's go ahead and kill some of these lights here and see this thing a little bit better. So in the overworld at the default brightness level, I'm going to turn the volume down. Um, it's pulling 114, 113 milliamps. If I recall correctly, it was at like 55, 56, so it's pretty much double, uh, but this does go brighter, does it? Yeah, now it's up at 133, and we can bring it down. It goes all the way off, actually. That's a surprise. Or is it all the way off? No, it's not all the way off. It's just horrendously dim. Yeah. So maybe if you're playing in a pitch black room. But, uh... I'd say this is about the lowest I'm comfortable with. Uh, anyway, there should be several different color palettes. This one probably looks great on the Pokemon Yellow title screen. And I think all of these color palettes should be the same. And yeah, they look pretty much the same to me. All right, so now let's test out the flash cart here. I've got an EverDrive GBX7 in uh, my own custom casing here. And yeah, that little bit of noise that's pretty common on DMGs when you boot such a high power cart. So we'll first start off with the gradient test and then I'll cycle through all the different color palettes so we can see what's going on. So as you can see, they did fix, um, well, they fixed it back in the V2 version, but it's still fixed in this version. We have white, light gray, dark gray, black. Next color palette, white, yellow, pink, black. White, yellow, pink, blue. Light blue, darker blue, darkest blue, black. This is one of my favorites here. Light green, darker green, darkest green, black. Uh, reddish, pinkish. It's supposed to be red, but it looks a little bit pink to me. Um, let's call it magenta. And then it cycles through the colors. Uh, this is the olive one. Uh, it looks significantly more green on my phone. I don't know how it's gonna look on your monitor, but this looks this reminds me of the palette, like if you're using the OEM screen. And then we have purple, light purple, yeah, lavender. And then back to black and white again. So now let's do... Can I hit the button from here? No, I can't. I'm just going to power cycle it. Let's do the scrolling bars test so we can see if this thing is dropping frames and how it handles uh, LCD resets. So what we want is completely smooth and we do expect to see a skip when that S from the word scrolling crosses on the left hand side and we do see a skip. But what's nice is we don't see a, a screen tear like on the, uh, oh wait, maybe, let's see. Yeah, right about, right about here, 
there's a vis there's an obvious tearing artifact when it resets, but that's okay. Um, that's pretty good. It's better than the um, the like the diagonal tearing that we see on the Game Boy Color IPS kit. Excuse me, the funny playing version of the Game Boy Color IPS kit, because there's actually a new IPS kit made by same people who make this kit, the One Chip Company. But well. That's another video for another time. Uh, but anyway, I'm very satisfied with that. Uh, now you might be looking at this going, well, even when it's resetting, you still see that artifact. But let me uh, let me give you a little little bit of background that I've given in some other videos. But you know, I don't expect everyone to watch all of my videos. Um, OEM screens, as in the original Nintendo screens, don't handle this test well either. Uh, now, they, there's no visual um, screen tearing, uh, so like diagonal lines working the way up, up and down the screen with these scrolling bars, but when the screen itself is reset, when the Game Boy issues a reset command, there's always like a dropped frame or a torn frame or something, even with the original LCD screens. Uh, in fact, you know what, let's, I've never done this before, but let's... Screw it, let's try it out, yeah? So I can show you what's going on. And I have to forgive me, this is going to be super awkward because OEM screen, but I think it still should be pretty apparent. Oh, I need... Shoot, I need button contact. I don't generally have these just laying around. <laughs> Does this light make it easier? No. Nope. What about this one? Yeah, a little bit. And so it's actually kind of hard to tell with the ghosting, but you can see when that's scrolling, the screen just flashes white. See what I mean? So the uh, new IPS kit actually handles this reset a little bit better. Let me darken the contrast that flash is a little bit more apparent so yeah I just I'm, I'm still very pleased with how these kits are passing this test uh, so as far as I can tell so far this is a wonderful kit uh, the biggest issue is that I need to take it apart again and do the install proper so bear with me while I zap these screws out again Got the screws out. Let's pop this ribbon out. So now that I'm thinking back, I think I'm partly to blame for some of those issues with the uh, button contacts because, again, I've been doing this in my video. I only put the screws in until I can until I can feel that it makes contact with the motherboard. I don't crank them all the way down but I never actually said that. Um, but it looks like they went as far as removing the screw holes, so that's not even an option anymore. I suppose if you're absolutely that dedicated, this is only a two-layer board, you could just drill some holes. But just, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, so we need to reposition this LCD because this bracket is not going to help us. Let me get my tweezers here so I can remove this tape. So yeah, in their defense, back to the buttons again, the button contacts, in their defense, the instructions do tell you to cut these two screw posts out. I thought that was nuts because they put holes and you could still use them, but the idea of cutting them out was that you wouldn't put screws in there. Okay. And there's still one more, but I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, get this bracket out of here. And so I think 
we're just going to wing it. Just center that up. Oh, this thing's gross. I should clean it. I'll just wash my hands later. Okay, um, what are we going to do now? I need to, I guess, tape this down. So the intended way that they want you to install this is you take the LCD, uh, and let me grab this one here. So you take the LCD, you put a strip of double-sided tape across the bottom, a strip of double-sided tape across the top, and you position it till you get it right, slam it in there. Then you take even more tape and put it one strap across like that and then one strap across like that. I don't like that. Um, like I said, I live in the desert. I live in a very hot climate. If I'm outside with this thing for any reasonable amount of time, the screen is just gonna, the adhesive is gonna let go and the screen is just gonna slide on me. So I think, um, yeah, ask me how I know. <laughs> uh, that's, that's why I have that other one taken apart right now. Um, so I think a bracket would be good for this one. I don't have one. I don't think anyone has, I think I'm one of the first few people in, uh, at least in an English speaking country with one of these kits. Uh, so I'll see about making a bracket later or someone will probably beat me to the punch. Uh, but as soon as I, as soon as I know of one, I'll throw a link in the description here. Uh, but for now, we're just going to go ahead and tape it in. And again, I'm going to be using capped on tape. Because this stuff won't let go in the heat. I'm sorry, there was a reason for it. I just never stated it out loud. Oh, and I cut this way too long. Oh, shoot. That's what I get for not holding it in. So we want it centered within the opening itself. And then the top, we want to push all the way up. And I'm just going to cut this in half. use that right there and then this one right here except I'm gonna have to cut an LED hole in this one as well away before I hurt myself. Alright. And I'll do one more piece down here. Actually I'll do a piece up there too, why not? You have a clear shell obviously you don't want to tape like this but working with what we got All right. I think that should do a fantastic job of holding it for now and I'll make another video when I get the uh, clear DMG I promise I don't promise I shouldn't make promises like that. I'll try to. All right. 
Oh, another thing I completely forgot about. Uh, the manufacturer actually recommends that you don't just put that against the board. You do need to insulate it. And I believe the, uh, the kits, at least if you order from... Actually, I, I, I don't know. I, I thought they would be coming with insulation. Mine didn't, but like I said, mine wasn't the final kit. Mine didn't come in in uh, retail packaging. Personally, to me, it looks fine. This is all, ins I mean, before putting the tape on there, it looked all insulated anyway. These are all uh, covered with the solder mask. And on this side, this isn't going to short against anything on the PCB. There's nothing there to short it against. So I think we're good but just in case and I'm calling this captain tape but captain is a brand kind of like Kleenex uh, it's actually polyamide tape Or if you watch EEV blog, Dave Jones has a really cute nickname for it, which makes it really un difficult to understand what the hell he's talking about if you don't know that he uses a nickname. But maybe that's just me. Okay. Go on there. And you know what? Let's put one more piece of tape. You know me, I like my tape. Hold this thing in place. Just so that there's no rattling. Well, it's a DMG, it's gonna rattle just so there's no more rattling than usual. Make sure the button contacts are still lined up. Okay. All right, one more time, gotta pop these screws in. Somehow I have an extra screw gun. Oh, no, I don't. It's just... I just accidentally unsorted them. Okay, I think we're good. All right, let's go ahead and put this bad boy together, yeah? So my absolute favorite part is jamming this ribbon cable up in here. Oh, I'm forgetting a step. Hang on. Come back to that in just a second. On this side, we need to trim that little outcropping so that the brightness wheel fits. So take some flush cutters. cut it flush. And I'm going to take my knoif and clean it up because despite being called flush cutters, they are not perfectly flush. Okay. And one more thing. This is not explicitly required, but some people have had an issue with this and have noted it helps to trim the uh, little points flush here and it's just that one that one and this one any of the ones that look like they go under the wheel there all right where are my screws i think these are the screws
All right, and just one more step here. Need to pop a lens on. Now I have two choices, both of them glass. I have a Play It Loud style glass cover and then an original style glass cover with the lighter background. That's the one I would be using, but like I said, I am going to be reshelling this, so I'm not going to use the, the lens at this time. Uh, I would have stuck it on if two of the screw posts weren't broken, but I'm basically taking this thing apart as soon as the video is over because uh, it doesn't actually close all the way. This screw post is missing and this screw post is split. Um, but yours should, uh, I mean, once that ribbon is folded, it should go together nicely. But, ugh. So one of the problems with these rechargeable batteries in here There we go. Did I forget to plug it in? I forgot to plug the screen in, didn't I? Nuts. Okay, hang on, bear with me again. There's the culprit. Why didn't you guys say anything? God damn it. You're sitting at home watching me put this thing together. There we go. There we go. At least I didn't have to take apart, take out all the screws. Ta-da! That looks a lot better, doesn't it? Still a little bit off-center, um, but you can blame yours truly for that. Let's try... Pokemon Silver. Oh, good lord. <laughs> that was very noisy. There we go. So yeah, nice and smooth. No frame drops that I can see, no tearing, no weird artifacts. Let's go get in the battle. Go destroy some poor kid or some wild Pokemon. And end this whole Pokemon's career. Say goodnight, Pidgey. So yeah, looks pretty darn good to me. I got, I have zero complaints. Um, now my issue is my Ikea Lottas barely work with this thing. Uh, if I jostle it too hard, one of them will get disconnected and 
it's gonna power off. So I can't actually power two of these at the same time. I don't have the uh, the DC plug, uh, or I'd pull them up both side by side. But I'll go ahead and take some pictures, and uh, I'll throw them up in an imager album in the description here. But yeah, there we go. I think this thing came out really nice. What a uh, what a crime they committed with Viridian Forest there, but that's, that's Pokemon Silver. That has nothing to do with the uh, kit itself. And again, don't mind the line. It's just this isn't the final Game Boy it's going in. I still have that film on there. But I just wanted to throw this lens on there as an example to show you that um, the positioning was more or less just, just about right. We need to center a little bit better, but again, that's my fault. Okay, I think I'm going to go play some Game Boy, and uh, until next time, guys, I'm go searching for a Play It Loud. A nice clear one that we can install this in. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll update the spreadsheet with the power and off camera I'll go ahead and test the brightness um, and update the spreadsheet with that. I suspect it's going to be pretty similar to the other kits, but it'll be interesting to see, you know, does this go... I think it's all the way up. Yeah. You know, does this go as bright as the other kit? Because I, I think the other the brightness on the other kit wasn't that great either compared to some of the, like, the Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Color IPS kits, but it's still, it's still wonderful. So it would be interesting to see how it compares with the other kit, but, I mean, honestly, from the outside, it looks the exact same to me. I don't notice any differences. I don't notice any issues either. It's wonderful. Anyway, I think I've said all I've, all I can say. So, until next time, guys, have a good night.